I've been seeing a lot of misleading information given out to retirees regarding retiring abroad lately. Uh, particularly by people who oftentimes have never even left their home country and certainly haven't lived abroad and lived in the countries they speak of. This bothers me. So in this video I'll be covering countries that are actually good for retirees based on my experience living in these countries for multiple months and traveling around the world for the last five or so years. These countries, as you can tell by the title of this video, are going to be for people who have a shoestring budget. This is primarily because I initially started traveling on a shoestring budget, so I have a good idea of how low you can go in these countries while being comfortable. I also am not a typical young person who does partying or any of that, so I really enjoy a quieter place and more amongst locals. We all live in some downtown noisy center. Um, so yeah, and I end up hanging out with a lot of retirees. So this is why I'm making this video. All of the locations I'll be covering are relatively affordable that have large English speaking populations or communities where you won't really need to learn a foreign language to live there comfortably. They will also be relatively quiet, have easy visa policies, which I'll mention in the video um, in their respective sections, as well as they all have decent, well, not decent, but very good healthcare at a decent price. So it might not be the cheapest healthcare, that would be in like India or Turkey, um, but it has good healthcare that it's clean, it's safe, um, they have good doctors, and you don't need some expensive insurance to pay for it. So of course I will be covering the cost of living in a country, the visa policies and how complicated they are, and of course my experience living inside of a country. Okay, so the first country I'm gonna cover is Albania. I lived here for around seven to eight months in 2020. It's a relatively small country with a very easy visa policy. It has some small issues, of course, but it stands out as one of the best countries, in my opinion, for retirees, as well as generally raising a family and living a more quiet, balanced life. So to start off the cost of living, I lived in the country's capital in the best area of the city, Bloku, uh, and it was around $850, $900 a month for what I spent. Um, this was staying in a Airbnb apartment. You can go much cheaper. Um, for your accommodation, saving a few hundred dollars a month um, over what I did. And I was going to coffee shops one to two times a day, eating out one to two times a day as well, as well as buying a lot of like fresh fruits and produce and all of that. Every place I stayed at had a small kitchen, some burners, a sink, all of that stuff, and fully furnished. It had a small living room with couch and all of that. Usually a one to two balconies, sometimes a few more than that, and usually it had one or two separate bedrooms as well. They were also on quiet streets without bars or traffic or any of that, so in my opinion they were relatively good areas. And sorry, I'm saying they because I stayed at more than one apartment, I stayed at a few different apartments in Bloku, as well as I did end up traveling around the country a bit, um, staying in Vloa, as well as I think it's... I forget, there's another city up north um, that I stayed in, and um, yeah, I stayed in Vlora a few months as well, and I stayed in the city up north for a few weeks. All of the places I stayed had those requirements, um, one or two bedrooms, a kitchen, a living room, and fully furnished and all of that. Short-term rental, so they were a little bit more expensive, but my budget stayed within $850 to like $900 a month, including the eating out and including uh, basically everything else I did. The coffee, the eating out, the transport to go like hiking in the mountains, all of it. So obviously Albania is extremely affordable. Um, the food is probably the best I've had anywhere in the world, um, particularly regarding the fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, it turns out a lot of Basically all of the produce and everything is produced by just local farmers, most of it's organic um, and the soil quality is very good so everything's delicious. Like the nectarines and stone fruits in specific as well as like the mandarin oranges and stuff were the best I've had anywhere in the world. As for cooking and eating out, a lot of it, it has lots of uh, Italian influence so you get very good Italian food, pizzas, pasta, all of that stuff. Um, but Albanian food's also very good. Um, I'm vegetarian, so Albanian food isn't perfect. 
they do have a lot of meat dishes, um, which obviously if you like meat, that would be great for you. Um, for vegetarians, they have like beans and a lot of other dishes and like cheeses and stuff. I'm also lactose intolerant, so I don't have cheeses, but um, yeah, Albanian food is also, it's more like a home style sort of food. Um, it's one of the best cuisines I've had. Um, even though I eat vegetarian, I don't eat cheese, it was still very delicious food there. They also have so, quite a bit of like Western food in the spots I stayed in. So in Bloku as well as in like the city center of Loa, um, they have a lot of uh, like Western food and like health food and all of that, salads, um, like special sandwiches, grains, stuff, I don't know, lots of healthy food. They also have like falafel and like Middle Eastern food and like international food quite a bit. Um, but overall, I never had any troubles with the food. It's probably one of the best countries for food in my opinion. As for visas, it's probably one of the best places, particularly if you're American, um, because you can get a one year visa on arrival in most cases, um, where you can stay up to a year on a tourist visa and just check it out, live there for some months and see how you like it. That's for any age, so that's what that's the visa I went on. But um, you can do that no matter how old you are or young you are, um, if you're American. If you're not American, they only have like three month visas, like 90 day visas for tourist visas. Um, I believe some countries actually do have 180 day visas, but you'd need to check on that. Um, but for Americans, it's great for that. Otherwise, you can become a resident of Albania. Um, they don't have a retirement visa or anything like that as far as I'm aware. But to become a resident, you can stay as long as you want and all of that. Um, but all you need to do is rent an apartment over, I believe it's like 20 square meters or I guess it's around like 200 square feet. So very small place or bigger. Um, basically anywhere, rent an apartment on a one year lease and have a few thousand dollars in the bank or some cash flow. And you can become a resident no problem and renew that continuously. It's one of the easiest countries to immigrate to as long as you're from a Western country or you have a bit of money to you. Really, unless you're from like a Middle Eastern country, they're not always too friendly to a lot of uh, Middle Easterners like Egyptians. Um, they are very strict on their visa policies for them. But if you're from anywhere in Europe or even Latin America or the US or Australia or Southeast Asia or East Asia, like Japan, um, retiring in Albania is very easy visa wise. You can also of course simply buy a property for between $30,000 and $100,000 and become a resident that way. Okay, so now for some quick downsides to Albania. Um, while people speak English in Bloku and a lot of the areas around like you'd be staying in, um, they don't speak perfect English throughout the entire country. It's not their first language, it's not even their second language, but most younger people do speak English enough to get by, as well as if you stick to the more like uh, well-developed areas like Bloku or like the city center in Vloa and all of these like cities, um, then generally people will speak English and you won't really have a big issue. Um, but if you're going to be retiring there, you will probably want to be in Tirana, the big city. Um, Preferably in Bloku or nearby. Um, there's a very beautiful park that's like uh, you can walk around it, a lake and everything. Um, that's I believe like a mile or a mile and a half around it or about three kilometers. Um, but it's fantastic to walk around, very beautiful. Um, but you'd probably want to be around there. And if you are, there's everyone really speaks English and there's a lot of foreigners to meet up with, including some retirees and families. There's also plenty of dogs and all of that that walk around the park and everything. So it's like a nice place if you have any pets as well. Okay, so now for some downsides and disclaimers about Albania. Um, it has some issues, namely the flight connections to Albania are not very good. Usually you'll end up having one or even maybe two layovers if you're from the US to travel to Albania. And the flights can be, uh, I don't know, around 600 to $1,000 one way. Um, so it can be quite expensive to get over there and come back if you want to like go back to the US and see family. Um, but if you're from Europe, of course, the flights are very cheap and some oftentimes direct from your country. Albania also, because it doesn't have very well, like good connections and because it's not a super rich country, it doesn't have access to a lot of like foreign goods or luxury goods. So if you 
okay with eating mostly European products and having uh, like fresh fruits, vegetables, and produce that's very high quality, then it works for you. But if you want like some frozen meals or you want like, for example, in the US we have a lot of frozen pizzas and frozen this, frozen that, that are very high quality to be honest. Um, if you want them to be, um, they don't have that in Albania. You're going to get maybe frozen vegetables, corn, bread, that's about it. Um, or some frozen fruit. You're not going to have like frozen meals that are high quality. You'll have to eat out or make something yourself. But that's not a big deal in my opinion. Another downside is the healthcare wise. They do have good healthcare and it's good. Like you can get even better healthcare on a short flight to Elo Europe or to Turkey for very cheap healthcare as well. Um, Albania's healthcare is very cheap and affordable as well, but it is a little bit, uh, the people who are in the hospitals don't always speak very good English. So if you have, like if you have frequent hospital visits or anything like that, it might not be the best country in that circumstance. Basically, if you're staying there long term and you do need a lot of hospital care, um, you will probably want to like have a friend in Albania, which wouldn't be hard to make friends, of course, who are locals, who could help you with translating if you need anything, or to just find a doctor that does speak English and frequent them. Okay, so the next country on this list will be Turkey. I lived there for around, uh, I don't know, half a year to a year on and off over the last few years. Um, and have been to, I don't know, like uh, probably about half the country, a little bit more than that, including living in a few cities for multiple months. I, I particularly like Istanbul. That's where I've mostly lived, particularly the neighborhood called Katikoy. Katikoy is a bit, uh, it has a younger crowd, lots of college students, and it's very walkable, lots of vegetarian food, and so that's why I like it. Um, but for retirees, you don't really need to be in the center like that, most likely. It, it isn't noisy, really, in my opinion, though. I stayed in apartments where it was just studio apartments or one bedrooms, and I ended up spending, I guess it would be like, maybe uh, $800 a month in most cases. Um, so you can live there on a budget. But if you want a bigger place in a studio or one bedroom, you would have to go a bit outside the city for that or to one of the smaller cities. The good thing about Turkey is it's not like Albania with it being so small. It still has very good fruits and vegetables and all of that, but also has access to a lot of other goods, particularly food goods, um, as well as it just has fantastic flight access. It has probably the best like access via flights to different areas of the world in almost any other country. There's also walkable areas in almost all the cities as well as various areas that are more car centric and car focused. So if you want to live like outside the city and you enjoy having a car to travel around, um, there's areas where we have huge parking lots, we have underground parking in a lot of places. Um, it's very easy to get around if you have a car or if you just want to live in a city center more and walk around. It doesn't get too loud in these city centers unless you're right next to a bar and that's usually in like a designated area um, and like, I don't know, 90% of the city center won't have any noise at all at night. It's quite safe in Turkey. Um, I didn't mention on Albania. Albania is fantastically safe. Um, there's no real crime there that I saw or experienced at all. I didn't meet anyone who had any crime or like any issues at all. Um, but Turkey, it's not, it's a little bit less safe, but it's still very safe. So unless you're near the Syrian border, um, or if you're out late at night and I'm talking like, I don't know, like 12, like midnight or later, um, then it's very safe in Turkey. Um, you like, there's some pickpockets that occur near like the uh, ferry terminals and stuff like that. But really, they are very rare, and if you live there, you'll recognize it's the same people all the time. They just target tourists. But this is present in basically all of Europe, uh, from Portugal to Turkey to Italy. Basically, any of the countries where tourists go a lot, they have these pickpockets. So it's not like it's not a big concern in my opinion. But it's just late at night in Turkey. Um, the people who drink can be a bit of hooligans, and um, 
they're not always very friendly to foreigners. Late at night, drunk people, um, a lot of them aren't actually Turkish or even like Syrian refugees. A lot of them will be just like people from random parts of the world that just, I don't know, they're, uh, drunk people can be uh, quite unreasonable. As I mentioned before, the healthcare is fantastic. It's the cheapest in any world along with India, but it's also very high quality. Um, and you don't need insurance or anything like that if you don't want to. You can pay everything out of pocket and it's relatively cheap. Um, so it, it is a little, and like English wise, um, Turkey is fantastic in terms of the big cities for English. The smaller cities, of course, like if you're not in a touristy area, they won't speak as much English, but in my experience, I didn't really have any issues. Um, it will just be harder to socialize with the locals if you're in a smaller city outside of like city center. Um, but in like Istanbul, unless you're in like the refugee area or one of the further out districts, most people in the city center um, or the popular areas like Kadikoy or near the uh, Grand Mosque, I think it's called, um, or Taksim, like these areas, people speak English, no problem. All the shop owners, all of it. Visa-wise, it's not as easy as Albania. Um, you don't get a like year visa on arrival or anything like that. You'll get a 60 or 90 day tourist visa when you first arrive. But then after that, you can buy a place for around 75 to 100,000 US dollars and get permanent residency there where you can just renew indefinitely and live there forever. And the property taxes in Turkey and all of the like extra administrative fees are basically nothing after actually purchasing the property. Um, but if you don't have that like large sum of cash, it can be a little more difficult to stay in Turkey, but there are a few options. Um, they don't really give residency out for just renting a place a lot of the time anymore, um, but there are options. The downsides for Turkey really are, it's a little more populated. Um, so if you're living in one of the big cities or city centers, it can be a, like, it can feel a little crowded. Um, it also doesn't have as much like parks or nature unless you're in a nice area. Um, but the nice areas aren't too expensive um, for foreigners. Like you can live on less than a thousand dollars a month easily, in my opinion. But Turkey, uh, one of the downsides to it is if you are staying there a long time outside of one of the city centers, it would be advisable, to say the least, to learn some Turkish. Because if you're staying there a long time and you're not speaking Turkish, the locals that live there, it'll be hard to socialize with a lot of them unless they're younger, and some of them will become less friendly, at least that's been my experience. Short term, very hospitable and friendly and stuff. Long term, still friendly and like not aggressive or anything, but when like asking questions or trying to get something specific done, it'll be hard to communicate and they'll get frustrated that you don't know Turkish. But that's at least been my experience. Okay, for the third country, um, it's gonna be Mexico. I lived there for also, I guess it was like around half a year in, uh, I believe it was 2021, it was. Um, and it's not my favorite country if I'm being honest, but that's because of where I stayed initially, which was in a city center. It was quite noisy and I was trying to live on too much of a budget, like less than $800 a month. Um, and it really didn't cut it in Mexico. Like I got by on $800, but it wasn't a very nice area I was staying in. The room was fine, but the noisiness was not nice. And the areas that are less noisy will be a little bit more than $800 a month. Like all bills included, food, everything. I'm sure you've already heard about Mexico quite a lot. Um, so I'll avoid a lot of the basics, but you can easily live there for less than $1,000 a month particularly if you're living in the less touristic areas or outside of your city center. If you're an American, you'll feel quite at home in my opinion. At least I did as someone from Texas. Um, Texas, it has lots of like, like Hispanic people and a lot of Mexican food. And there's a lot of blend of like Tex-Mex food, a blend of Texan and Mexican food. Um, so it felt quite like home. A lot of the grocery stores had similar products, similar setups, a similar atmosphere even. 
Um, the only real difference was the cars were a bit more noisy, it's a bit more populated, and a few other nuances about the country. But the main reason I mentioned Mexico is I know it's the place most Americans want to go to to retire. Um, and it's, if you can get a visa very easily if you have either $2,200 a month in income coming in uh, consistently, or you have, I believe it's over $85,000 or maybe it's $65,000 of investments in like a brokerage account, 401k, whatever it might be. That's to retire in Mexico. If you are younger like I am and you want to get residency or retire there and you're below, I believe it's like 55, um, then you'll have to you'll have to rent a place in Mexico as well as like it depends on the state how much you'll need to make or have an investment. Generally, it'll be around the same amount. Um, sometimes it'll actually be uh, like half as much though. Um, so that's an option also if you don't want to do the retirement visa and like have if you don't have like $2,200 a month or $85,000 in investments. Um, certain states you can retire, like get the residency for, if you have less than that, it might only, you might only need like $1,200 a month if it's a poor state in a smaller city, maybe like in Chiapas. Mexico, the best locations to really retire in would be one of the smaller cities, so not Mexico City, uh, one of the like tier two, tier three cities, um, like Guadalajara, Oaxaca, um, out of void like Cancun and uh, like this area. Um, instead, I'd focus more on like the less touristic places because Cancun and like uh, Tulum are quite expensive and uh, they're filled with, quite frankly, uh, very annoying tourists usually because they're just there to party very quickly and leave. So there's a lot of scammers, there's a lot of like bad behaving foreign tourists and also locals seem to become less friendly in like Quintaru, that province, uh, probably because of so many annoying foreign tourists um, who go there versus in other places and stuff like Guadalajara, the locals are very friendly. Even if y'all can't really speak very well together um, due to the language barrier, um, they're still very friendly usually. The downsides to Mexico is really it's a bit more expensive and uh, like it's a bit more noisy. If you're not living in a like better area or a quieter, smaller town. Um, so if you like big cities for whatever reason, it's not the cheapest place if you wanna live a relaxing, comfortable life to say the least. Um, you also, it's really, uh, it is better to learn some Spanish if you're gonna be living in Mexico. Um, people, especially younger people, or more like affluent, wealthier people do speak English usually, but like everyday interactions, it's much easier and like interacting with locals are much happier and friendlier if you speak some Spanish. I'm sure people have already told you about the food in Mexico, so I won't really get into that. But in terms of where you should think of retiring in Mexico, if you're on a shoestring budget especially, uh, consider the peninsula on the western part of Mexico. Um, this is where most retirees seem to retire who are Americans and it's very like conducive for an American lifestyle. Otherwise, I'd recommend one of these smaller cities, uh, particularly ones that are in the mountains more. And then really the medium to big cities like Oaxaca and uh, Guadalajara are pretty good options, or really anywhere on the east coast. So I'm talking like east of Mexico City on the coast. These cities, all of these cities there, are really good prices overall and good quality of life without a lot of foreign tourists that are behaving badly, so the locals are still friendly, uh, very friendly. And uh, the, like there's not, like usually rich people in Mexico seem to not go to that area because the water isn't quite as clean and nice as in like Acapulco, uh, where the water is a bit cleaner and it has more luxury properties there. Um, so yeah, it's a cheaper place where it's still by the beach and it's a more relaxing place in my opinion. Okay, so those are my personal recommendations of countries I've been in that are good for retirees. Um, some honorable mentions here would be like Thailand. It is a fantastic place to retire. If you're a couple, and I say if you're a couple or a female trying to retire on your own, it's a great place because it's super safe. It has great food. It's very cheap. The visa policy is relatively easily. There's tons of retirees here and everything. 
the issue I say in like the one disclaimer, like I'm in Thailand right now, by the way, like I have, you can see like Thai writing and everything on my bottle. Um, it's great here. The issue is I meet a lot of retirees here who are single men. And well, if I'm being honest, pretty much every single man here who's a retiree seems to be unhappy. And the reason why is because they end up like going into a lot of devices Thailand has to offer. Um, and because of this, they end up being very unhappy, oftentimes losing what little money they may still have and generally drinking a lot and associating with really a not so good crowd of retirees. And it, I don't know, they just seem very unhappy. Um, the couples who come here and retire seem very happy. And the few females I've met who decide to retire here seem very happy. But basically the single guys, unless you have like a very strong conviction and you're not interested in a lot of devices Thailand has to offer, um, usually it seems to destroy them in the long term. Um, so if you can't like avoid those like I do, then don't come to Thailand as a single guy. Otherwise, it's a great place. The next honorable mention would be Brazil. Brazil is one of my favorite countries in the world. Um, it has fantastic people, probably one of my favorite people on earth. Um, super, super friendly. Uh, the language is beautiful. Um, the nature is beautiful. Everything about it is great. The food's great. Um, there's just a few downsides to Brazil that make it not always the best for retirees. Uh, specifically, Brazil is not very safe in all the areas. So if you're looking to retire in a place where you can truly relax and you don't have experience growing up poor or like any street smarts to you, um, it, can, it, it can be a little dangerous if you aren't used to that. If you are used to it, it won't really be an issue. You just have to have some standard practices where like maybe you're not taking your phone out and waving around in public. You're not like opening your wallet on the street and counting your money. You're not, you're not being ridiculous about things. If you do those things, you're gonna get robbed. Um, otherwise, you're usually pretty fine in Brazil. I never had any issues and I lived there for, I guess it was six months in 2021. Yeah, 2021, six months, uh, and 2020 a little bit in there. Um, it was towards the end of the year. With that being said though, regarding the safety of Brazil, there are plenty of smaller towns as well as beach towns where it is completely safe in my opinion, as well as certain areas of the city and most of the poor areas like the favelas, um, they are entirely safe in my opinion. You won't have any issue there. It's just, it isn't the safest country overall. The one other issue with Brazil, like the healthcare is great, food's great, all of that, like I mentioned before. Um, the one other issue is to really thrive in Brazil, you do need to speak a little bit of Portuguese. I arrived there speaking absolutely no Portuguese and uh, almost nobody speaks any English unless they are very wealthy or very foreigner. So there is a large retirement community that speaks English of Americans and British people that go there. Um, particularly in Rio, um, but if otherwise, like it is kind of hard to communicate with a lot of locals. Most people at restaurants, grocery stores, whatever it might be, don't speak any English at all, and I mean none at all. So you will need to learn Portuguese if you do decide to retire in Brazil. You can like learn it once you're there, it's not a big deal. It's a relatively easy language to learn in my opinion, especially when you're in Brazil, because there's so many opportunities to talk with people and just have small chats. Um, so yeah, it's a relatively easy to learn in my opinion compared to other languages. Okay, so those five countries are the ones I'd recommend most people to retire in that I've lived in for extended periods of time. Um, there are a few other countries where I've lived in um, that would be good for certain types of people. So if you're just some hippie yogi person, particularly if you're single, um, Nepal or India is fantastic for that, it's especially Nepal and it's very cheap and you can get visas very easily. But these other countries are for specific types of people. Pretty much any, anyone can go to these five countries I mentioned too and be happy as long as the caveats that I mentioned regarding them aren't an issue to you. Um, number one that I've been to would be Albania that I'd recommend people to retire in, especially if they're American or at least check out. 
Um, it's one of the best countries I've been to, and it's it is a country I well I'm not planning for my retirement yet because obviously I'm still in my 20s. Um, but I do plan to live in Albania whenever I have kids, um, or at least visit there quite a bit because the quality of life and like just the lifestyle of it all is just fantastic if you want to live a like quiet more down-to-earth life in a clean environment without pollution and on a good budget but with that being said that's going to be all for this video if you have any questions or thoughts or specific questions regarding one of these countries or another country regarding retirement or just how life is there i've been to i don't know probably 20 countries living in each for at least a few months um so yeah i can answer quite a bit of those questions and usually i do hang out with a lot of re retirees in these countries so like here in here in thailand i every saturday i usually go on a hike with a group of 10 15 retirees who live here because they go on long like 20 kilometer hikes and they're i don't know they're in great condition for their age so yeah i've heard a lot of their experiences living in other countries and trying to retire elsewhere such as in vietnam or in japan or in italy or spain or portugal and how they've went ahead and decided you know what i'm going to quit living in Portugal or wherever they were retiring before and I'm going to move to Thailand or some others that I met in Albania moving to Albania or whatever it might be so if you have any other thoughts or questions about any other countries or these feel free to leave those down below and I'll answer them when I see them with that being said bye bye